3 million members searching, singlemuslim.com proudly sponsors Single Muslim Live. Assalamu alaikum and welcome to Single Muslim Live here on British Muslim TV, sponsored by singlemuslim.com. I'm Fahima Mohammed, your relationship and couples coach, and I want to welcome all of you watching from around the globe, as well as if you're streaming from Facebook, Twitter, and live on Sky Channel 752. A very, very warm welcome from all of us here on British Muslim TV. Again, we have a really interesting topic and you can be part of the conversation by calling in live to the studio directly by dialing 01924-231083. Do remember to ask the bill payers permission as standard network rates do apply. However, if you want to use our free WhatsApp service, you're more than likely to use that by dialing in 07585-835-150. And you can also keep yourself anonymous if you do wish to do so. Again, um, I also want to say that because of the topic that we have tonight, I want to remind the viewers that if you're triggered in any way negatively, we do have a support system here on British Muslim TV. And that is the website uh, www.britishmuslim.tv forward slash support. The reason why I say this is because tonight we're going to be discussing moving on from an abusive relationship. It's a very unfortunately common traumatic situation that a lot of people are going through right now and with me tonight I want to introduce my wonderful guest who's going to be helping us in this conversation and discussion and she is Farzana Karawali. Salaamu Alaikum Farzana. Alaikum Salaam, thank you so much for having me today. No, it's so lovely to have you tonight. I know that you know you're very passionate about this particular topic and you have vast amounts of experience. So I want to get straight into it. But before we do so, tell me a little bit about yourself, especially for the viewers, so that we understand your work and a bit about you. And so by profession, I'm a learning disabilities nurse and a social worker. I've set up um, voluntary services under charity. Um, I've set up support groups. Um, and as a result, I went into coaching um and uh training so i'm also a professional trainer so it's a bit of a mix that's amazing you do so much and this topic when it comes to moving on from an abusive relationship is that really possible and if so how it is but there needs to be a lot of support it's not with, with trauma uh, when you've been in a in an abusive relationship there's a lot of trauma that you would experience, um, which can be quite embedded depending on obviously how long you've been in that relationship for um, the circumstance around that relationship um, and you know the type of issues that you were experiencing. And I think uh, when, when it is a traumatic um, time to come out of that and to heal is very difficult and it takes a while. So you often need somebody to support you through that, whether it's somebody professional or you also have somebody that's a friend or a family member that can also be there for you during that period of time, because it's not a quick fix to, mm -hmm. to kind of move on. It, there's a lot of support required and a lot of change. When you talk about support, what kind of support? You've mentioned some of the individuals or some of the um, people in you know, professional institutes. But now if we have someone watching and they have got you know, someone around them that is coming out of the situation, what are the kind of things that you could suggest that is really supportive? Because sometimes you know, we don't really understand what is being supportive. And sometimes we could either make it worse or we're not there enough. So could you give us some examples? I think that's an excellent question. A lot of the time I know, particularly um, when us ladies get together, we like to have a good conversation. We like to let our heart out. And, and along, whilst we do that, there's a chance that we may trigger ourselves in the process of bringing up what's happened, you know, repeating our story again and again. And I think rather than um, talking um, to kind of, feel better sometimes if we reflect. So if we talk in a way of reflection, and one of the, the, um, one of the things that I feel is really helpful is using reflective cycle, which we use a lot within the health profession. 
the Gibbs reflective cycle that can help you through your thought, thought process and your conversations so that you don't end up triggering yourself. You are um, pro, you're in a process of thought as opposed to your thoughts bringing you down when you're having these conversations. I hope that makes sense. Yes, it does. Absolutely. I understand what you're saying. However, you know, when you've come out of a really abusive relationship and it is trauma, how long would you wait to actually um, start reflecting and healing? Because again, it's like a grieving process as well. There's lots going on. There's lots to encompass, especially if you've got children or you're trying to, you know, get over the fact that you are now here when you used to be there. And, you know, some people, it's a shock. So um, what would you advise? Um, would you see someone professional straight away or would you just have that loving comfort from your home and family and friends? How would you uh, sort of guide that? See, it depends on each individual. Um, some people are a lot more resilient than others. And so they have those strategies already and built within them. And some people don't. Um, it also depends on the level of trauma, like I said before, and the amount of time you the person has gone through trauma. So, I, I, you know, I, it's not a quick fix answer, but if you really feel that you're struggling, if every time you think about what's happened, it just takes you further and further back, I think you really do need to look at professional help as opposed to just, you know, asking family and friends to help. You, you need that little bit extra. When you talk about, um, you know, finding yourself, your true self and reflection, um, what exactly do you mean by that? So I think um, particularly if if we've been through any kind of trauma, if it's not even if it's not a, a you know a traumatic relationship, trauma from the past, from childhood, um, which can have an impact on your relationship as well, which maybe we could talk about in a little bit. But any kind of trauma that you may have had, it has an impact on you in terms of your self esteem, your ability to trust yourself, um, your ability to love yourself. Um, and I think those are key in terms of we we lose ourselves in such relationships where, you know, we haven't been treated well, where we haven't been heard, we haven't been respected. Um, we've not even been tolerated to some extent in some of these relationships, it, you know, um, there may be physical abuse as well. Um, and a lot of the time, I think there's guilt that comes from there. So these are all the kind of emotions that you need to be able to identify and work through. And it's not always easy to do that by yourself when you're already overwhelmed with so much emotion. That is very interesting. Um, I like the fact that you said about, you know, seeking that extra help. And obviously it is a case by case study. We are generalizing here. Everyone will deal with it differently. As Rosanna has mentioned, we all have a different level of tolerance and acceptance and also moving on. But when it comes to abusive, traumatic relationships, usually the partner stays in it for a very, very long time. And it takes a while where they give themselves an excuse that it's going to become better and it's actually going to, um, you know, it's going to be more tra traumatic to actually leave, maybe because of family and kids and things like that. So how would you advise somebody who is in it and who is struggling and to be brave to actually come out of that situation in a healthy way? Again, I know this obviously depends case by case, but what does an individual need to really consider for themselves in order to get them in that headspace so that they can actually be brave enough to move out? Because, you know, even though we're moving on from an abusive relationship, we need to address those moments before we move on as well, which is also very, very traumatic. It's, quite, it's very scary. People actually, you know, have risked even their lives by doing it and taking some really, really drastic actions. So, how would you advise somebody that's in it right now who is going through it and wants to leave? What would you tell them? I think you need to find somebody that you trust. Yeah. And, and when you have a chance to tell them what is happening, but on a factual basis, obviously, a lot of the time when you're going through um, a traumatic situation, you end up playing things down. Um, you end up um, kind of justifying the actions of the other person. But I think if you look at it from a factual light, you know, of what is actually happening 
and not how you feel about it, you'll see a bit more of the truth. And that might be more motivating for you to actually think about leaving the relationship. But you need to reach out to somebody that you trust. You need to tell them whether you're ready or not to leave at this stage. Um, but if it's something that you, you want to do, you want to leave and you're ready to leave, then you need to maybe start looking at planning with them of what would be the best options. Ask them to get advice for you if it's very difficult for you to get advice because everyone's in a difficult situation. We, you know, we don't know whether you are kind of housebound or, um, you know, you, you've been told that you can't talk to anyone, you can't see anyone. Um, a lot of the time when you're in abusive relationships, you have been actually um, kind of pulled away from all the contacts that you know and you're left quite vulnerable. So I think you need to first think about who who there is in your life that you think you could reach out to at any point, even if it's on the school run and it's one of the mums at school that you think you get about five, ten minutes to have a conversation with. That might be a way to start. Those are great tips. Um, it is quite um, a traumatic you know, uh, episode that we are dealing with tonight. There are many issues that are actually in our Muslim community. Um, we are going to go into a short break, but when we come back, we have more questions for Fazara, so please do stay where you are. We also want to remind the viewers that, yes, if you are triggered by anything that is being talked about tonight, please do contact us. We do care for your well-being, even if we are raising these issues. It's only because, unfortunately, it is happening, and we want to make sure that there is more awareness and there's more strategies and tips put in place so that you cannot stay stuck any longer in these situations. And if you want to do so, then please in and uh, reach out to britishmuslim.tv forward slash support. The other thing I want to also add is if you have any comments and if you want to even send any messages, you can do so anonymously. There is definitely help here on the show tonight. And if you wanted advice from Frazana, please do reach out. She's only here for tonight. So please take the opportunity to message and I will read them out um, after the break. We also are going to be discussing more about um, the gender roles, because um, unfortunately it is more and more now where it's not just the women that are being abused. There are men in our Muslim communities that are also having abuse. But again, like I said, we're going to be discussing this after the break. Inshallah, you stay exactly where you are. And I look forward to seeing you in a few moments. Inshallah, we'll see you shortly. Take care. Assalamu alaikum. See you after the break. With 3 million members searching, SingleMuslim.com proudly sponsors Single Muslim Live. Assalamu alaikum and welcome back to Single Muslim Live here on British Muslim TV sponsored by SingleMuslim.com. We are actually addressing a really, really important topic tonight regarding moving on from an abusive relationship. I have a, a comment that I'd like to read out as well, which has come through during the break. And it says, Salam Fahima and Farzana. I do agree that abusive, toxic, unhealthy relationships can be very difficult. We all want a good, happy relationship, inshallah. A toxic, abusive relationship especially can lead to traumatic insecurities and make it very difficult to find a new relationship. Well, that comment is going to be my next question. But before I go on to that, thank you so much for sending that in. I really do appreciate it. When it comes to, you know, leaving that relationship, you know, a lot of the times um, it is very difficult because in Islam, especially it is, you know, the most hated thing is to have a divorce and to and to be patient and to actually stay in that relationship. What would be the one thing that you would shout out to men, because there are men in abusive relationships too, or women, to stay and work at it? Or what would be the stage and that red flag to say, no, I have to leave? What would you sort of, you know, again, recommend for that, for Zana? Oh, that's a, that's a really interesting one, because it, obviously we everyone's situation is different, you know, and really... You know, are you are you treated well? Uh, the problem is a lot of the time 
we justify why things happen to us. No, it's because I'm like this, that's why. No, it's because I did this, that's why. You know, and, and so it's not justifying things, even even the person that, that's, um, you know, perpetrating the abuse is justifying why they are perpetrating the abuse. And, and so it's quite a vicious circle. So I think what you really need to do is be true to yourself. And again, bouncing off somebody else will give you a perspective that you aren't seeing. But again, it has to be factual. It can't be what you feel is happening. You have to really learn to be able to focus on what is happening and the facts of what's happening. So, you know, um, my finances have been used or I was hit or I was hurt or emotionally, these are the things that this person is saying to me. It's factual, not not your thoughts, not the emotions that talk you out of, of, of the situation. Sometimes it's a lot easier for us to stay within abusive relationships because it's a lot less hassle. It is very difficult to, to kind of fight an abusive relationship, to leave an abusive relationship. You need to have a level of motivation, which by this point, you're exhausted. There is no motivation. So again, be real in terms of how you judge the situation. And if you think you're in danger, you're at risk, your quality of life is, is very poor, then maybe you need to speak to somebody and get some advice. And there's so many advice lines that, you know, um, that you can call um, just, just to Google and you can just have a chat with them maybe while you're on the school run and there's you know, no expectation that you will be on a phone call or doing anything. Because I know it can be quite controlling living within an abusive relationship. On that point, actually, I love what you said, um, especially about the controlling part. And after being in a relationship, um, you know, the actual, um, they become sort of like very vulnerable. And um, how can you come out of that state of vulnerability or, you know, a victim mentality mode? And what does that actually even mean? Because they have been abused and they are to a certain extent a victim. Mm -hmm. But what could you suggest to get out of that vulnerable state so that they can move on and especially for another relationship eventually? I think when you're in that, that state of mind and rightly so, you are a victim. However, you're a victim within that relationship, not a victim as a human being. Yeah. As a person, what are your qualities? What are your values? I think we need to go back, take a step back and, and sit within the pain a little bit just to, to think about actually what happened to me wasn't right. Who am I? You know, what are my values? What, what did I bring from my upbringing that really means a lot to me? Where do I want to go from here as a person? How do I see myself in the future? You know, what are my dreams? Um, and all of that will kind of bring you back into perspective in, in terms of life. If we're going to keep focusing on the abuse that's happened in the past, we'll never move away from the abuse. It's about moving forward. And that's not easy. I know it's very difficult to move forward. But we need to understand that actually we are capable of love. We can love ourselves and we need to trust ourselves. That's the other thing we stop doing. We stop trusting ourselves. We trust Others may be around us, which can be difficult, depends who it is, but we stop loving ourselves. Fahim, I just wanted to bring up something, if you don't mind. I remember oh, you shared a clip, you yes, shared a clip with me, and um, when I was listening to the beginning of that clip, the lady, um, I don't know if you remember, she was sharing some affirmations. She started off with affirmations, and her affirmations weren't, um, I can or I will, like some of the affirmations that we hear. It was I may. So I may be free. I may be loved. I may be healthy. Now, when I was repeating that, I was feeling a bit for me. I may be loved. I may be free. I may be healthy. I found that slightly difficult. And we normally do. Right. Anything that we bring towards ourselves, we somehow always talk ourselves out of it. But as soon as she said, you know, you as in the person in the room or somebody near you that we wish it on them. So if it's yourself, Fahima, you may be healthy, you may be free. That feels a lot easier. And then when you do it towards others as a group or a community, it feels even easier. 
which is why people fall into this victim mentality to some extent because they feel that they're 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 not um capable of of receiving love they're not good enough and what's what is good enough and what is perfection you know when we look at um the beauties of allah's created nature going into the woods and things like that the imperfections are perfection you don't see every tree lined up in a straight line and you know the leaves all perfectly piled up you know naturally the distortion within the, the image that we see in the woods is beauty you know so i think we need to also realize that we're never going to be perfect in our eyes because we're very harsh judges of ourselves you know we are perfect in the eyes of allah Absolutely. I love that. That's really glad. I'm really glad you shared that, actually. Um, the other thing, I guess, when you're saying about um, talking about the other, I guess it's a projection. So you sometimes have to be in a space yourself to feel it for yourself, to project to somebody else. Or if you're not feeling it, try to just, you know, be sort of wishful for the other. And that hopefully can reflect back onto you because there are differences in in sort of affirmations where, you know, they say you have to believe in it or you have to think in it. It's very difficult to do that when you're not feeling, you know, that sort of 100% yourself. And it's difficult to even wish good on anyone else because you just think the whole world is kind of dark and, you know, doom and gloom. So unfortunately, it is definitely a place that you do need to seek. Um, I would suggest a professional sort of help and take the steps. Now, if you are going to... Um, basically move on to another relationship that is a really really uh a jump you know and also more vulnerabilities and insecurities come across because you're wondering is your past going to repeat itself or things like that um but before we do i actually have a message before you answer my question it says um hi fahim and farzana thank you for your insights they're very useful and interesting to listen to i wanted to ask do you, why do pure hearted women with good character and good intentions often attract men who hurt, abuse and try to control them? Thank you so much for sending that message again. And um, there's another continuous message as well. But before I go into that, could you maybe answer that for Zana? Because that was kind of my that was kind of my question anyways, to sort of say sometimes we attract the same and what is it that makes a person that's good that actually has that kind of same relationship again and again? So it's that selflessness, isn't it? I'll give you, I'll give you as much as you need. I'll be what you want me to be because I love you so much. And I think it's that I'll be what you want me to be is where sometimes we end up letting ourselves go without realizing, you know, we need to be who we need to be. And, and also be the, you know, the person that, that needs to be within that relationship. But we shouldn't give ourselves in totally that we lose our identity and we don't know where we're going. Does, does that make sense? That makes, a, a, you know, amazing sense. And to be honest, the, the question does go on, but I wanted to break it up because she said, especially women who are successfully um, academically and career wise, they often have issues with men who try to step on them. I don't understand why do insecure men go for confident women? Is that even something that you have come across? And, and again, thank you so much for that message because I guess there is no trait uh, regardless of how professional you are you can still fail at relationships or there are things within you from your past or wounds that you haven't healed or you haven't really known for yourself that can make a difference so what's your sort of um, response to that so within relationships we know that opposites attract right so if if i'm lacking something i find that in somebody else which is again another issue that we have if we're lacking in something we hope that somebody else will fulfill that within us um, and that's where the opposites attract. And so in in the, the question that you just gave, why does somebody that's maybe not in a, in a higher position is looking for somebody in a higher position? It's that I don't have it. I need somebody to have it so that we can be together in terms of I feel whole, you know? Um, it's like a jigsaw puzzle relationships, you know? Mm -hmm. um, and even within a relationship, it switches sometimes you find that the person that was a dominant one at the start of the relationship may have lost their dominance and it's flipped but it's very 
you don't see often people on the same wavelength you know together within a relationship because we're always compensating each other wow that's such great points and it's so interesting and really uh i love everything that you've said so far however we are going to go back into a short break again thank you so much for all those messages and we were going to go into it in much more in-depth detail especially when it comes to moving on to another relationship and the steps we're going to take in order to do that successfully as we know going from you know a really abusive one can be very traumatic not just to get over it but to actually trust again not just you know the other partner but yourself in your decision making so that is exactly what we're going to do as shortly after the break and inshallah i hope to you know for you to join us straight afterwards stay exactly where you are and we will see you in a few moments after the break assalamu alaikum have a lovely cup of tea or water and we'll see you in a few moments take care With 3 million members searching, SingleMuslim.com proudly sponsors Single Muslim Live. Assalamu alaikum and welcome back to Single Muslim Live here on British Muslim TV, sponsored by SingleMuslim.com. Again, we are discussing how to move on from an abusive relationship. We discussed before the break how it is that we need to sort of, you know, get out of that vulnerable mentality and victim state of mind, as well as try to seek the support and guidance from loved ones around us and maybe consider even some professional help in order to move us along. And we also had a few questions, which again, I want to thank the viewers for actually participating and interacting with us. These are your topics, your choices, and we're only here to make sure that we give the best sort of feedback education-wise from professionals like Farzana. Farzana, do you think it's wise, wise to move on to another relationship um, after being abused in an abusive one? Because is there a time that you need to sort of see for yourself or do you think that your next partner may be also part of your healing? What's your thoughts on that? I would say even if you were in a relationship that's not been abusive or traumatic, you would still need to take time out before you go into another relationship. So particularly with people that have been through abusive relationships, definitely need to take time out. You have to learn to be with yourself. And like I said before, you have to learn to love yourself, accept yourself, trust yourself. You have to ma master compassion towards yourself and understand actually who you are. When we live with when we lived with our parents, for example, we lived um, the way that they liked us to live. Right. We had our own ways of living, but we still on the whole lived the way they like to live. And the same when you're living with it, with it, with your partner, you will end up live, meeting in the middle sometimes. Or maybe if it's an abusive relationship, you will actually give yourself a way to be what your partner wants you to be. And so in that, you've lost your identity, you've lost who you are, and that's your strength. That's the only strength you have is yourself. You need to rebuild that strength right from scratch, and you need to start finding who you are, finding yourself, finding, you know, um, the kind of personality you are, how you communicate with people, what you like to do, what your interests are, um, the kind of person you are in the sense of, you know, do you like to be organized? Um, all these things are very relevant because when you're finding the next person, you need to make sure that there's no clash there in, in, in the relationship, you know, that, you know, you know who you are and they know who they are. And as individuals, again, you can complement each other, but there are boundaries between you, you know? So I think, um, you know, you also need to be working on your negative thoughts. If you've been in a relationship where you've always talked yourself down because somebody else has talked you down, you need to start working through those thoughts, those negative thoughts, to a, to a point where you actually don't fall victim of those thoughts. You're actually able to say to the thoughts when they come into your mind, you know what, I've heard you, I've acknowledged you, and I think at the moment I don't believe that, so that's fine. It's not about dismissing those negative thoughts because they'll just come back. 
It's about addressing them and realizing that they're not true. Yeah. And again, that's trusting yourself. That's what you need to do in something like that. Another thing you need to be able to do is when you tell your story to anyone, you don't suddenly come over with a sense of overwhelm and it takes you straight back. If it triggers you straight back, you're going to struggle in any other relationship that you have. So what you need to do is is not um, ignore or kind of block the emotions that relate to that um, um, that story. But you need to be comfortable with your story that you, you trusting yourself again is key there that you did the best you could. The situation wasn't right. There's nothing more that you could have done apart from leave, which you have done and build yourself up. And you hopefully will not over time not be triggered by your story. Once you know that you're not triggered by your story, your story is something that's happened in the past and it's not having an impact on you now, then maybe you're closer to moving into another relationship. But there's a lot more that you need to look at. And again, professional help can really help you to work through this. Absolutely. I agree 100% with what you're saying, especially because, you know, people do lose their identities, especially when they're under so much control. And it's from, you know, so many years uh, and things like that. Um, I just want to also have another question sent over. But before I do that, I just want to ask you, do you think that actually um, we are actually capable of moving on to another relationship where it doesn't repeat the same pattern? Um, how would you sort of get away from doing that, so that you don't choose the same kind of partner? So if you've worked on yourself, by that point, you'll be able to identify what leads you back to the person that you were before. And what I would say is before, obviously, you look for another partner, you start to, you know, um, Maybe with your, with your friends, you know, start to spend more time socially because a lot of the time you're socially isolated, right? When, mm -hmm. when you're in, a, in an abusive relationship, you haven't really been out much. You haven't interacted with people. And sometimes interacting with people can, again, trigger you, lead you down, you know, a difficult path in terms of your emotional well-being. So start to go out more, meet people. And I would always advise, I mean, we, we advise young, young people when they're getting married to consider, you know, premarital coaching or support um, just to make sure that, that both the couple actually fully understand each other and they're ready for when they actually live together and they're married to be able to um, be together and respect each other. I think that's that's something that can be done even after you know, you've had a divorce and you want to re-enter another marriage, just to make sure from an impartial person that you both respect each other, you've got mutual ground, yet you've also got your own identity. And it's all very clear right from the start. Would you tell your next partner that you have been in an abusive relationship previously? What's your thoughts on that? I think if you're going to work on yourself to trust yourself, then you also need your partner to trust you. And for that, I feel that you must say what's happened to you. I mean, you don't need to go into every single detail. If they don't want to know, you don't have to force it down their throats. Um, but you can, you know, tell them what you feel comfortable and that it was a difficult time and it's in the past. They may ask you straight out, well, how do I know it's in the past? How do I know it's yeah. not going to have an impact on you? And that's good. That's why these conversations need to happen. You will understand from that conversation how much this person cares for you, understands you, respects you. All of that will show up straight away within that conversation when you are truthful to them. That is very true. I think it is something which we do need to consider to be kind of open and that we're not actually, you know, feeling that we're dealing with that yourself. Um, when it is uh, in our Muslim communities, do you think that culture is an issue with this kind of um, sort of situation when you are in an abusive relationship? How does that kind of, you know, either maybe make it more worse to even move on or even come out of an abusive relationship? Do you think it's a culture issue? Um, I think 
it's a culture issue, but it's also, I mean, family members are scared, aren't they? They're scared about you going back into a relationship that might cause trouble, or a lot of the time you're forced into relationships straight away. You know, you're still young, you need to get married, you shouldn't sit around, you shouldn't whatever. But I would say, I think with culture, we need to, again, I know who we are. Culture is a big mix of what we were brought up with, what society thinks now. It's not factual, it's opinionated. And I think what we need to do is look at the facts in life. Again, who am I? Um, what do I need in, in life? What is going to work for me at this time? You know, you may have children, which might be your first priority. Um, you may not have children, but you may want to develop yourself in the work space. So I think it's always about what's right for you at that time and have a conversation with the family and say to them that, yes, it's not off the cards, you know, for me to get married. But I think at the moment I need to build myself. I need to be strong, you know, myself. And I'm sure they will understand. I think one thing we have to be cautious about is that there's a big difference between culture and religion. Culture can be very muddied. It's not clear. Um, and this is why I think these discussions need to happen. Whereas obviously religion kind of guides us more as to how we need to do things. I, I hear you, but unfortunately, I do feel that majority of us do live more towards, the, to, you know, traditional sort of values and cultural values more than even the religious. And I think a lot of these things would not happen if it was just mainly religious. Um, I do feel as well um, when it comes to our faith and even in our community leaders and uh, sort of centers, do you think there's enough support out there for Muslims who are going through something like this? Do you think there needs to be more training more? Because, you know, even if you have someone who understand, you know, the theology and the understanding of Islam, but when it comes to practical every day, um, unfortunately, I have heard a few cases that, you know, there isn't that much support. If a woman goes to, you know, an imam, for example, saying that they've been abused, it's like, you know, we'll have the patient sister and do this in a way where, you know, you have to still stick with that sort of abuse and there's not real training there. And it can be really detrimental. What is your sort of like response to that? I would totally agree. There does need to be more training in how to work with um, a couple that are broken up because of abuse, um, to be able to find out what has actually happened. There's a lot of fabrication of stories from both sides. And this is where the problem occurs because the person that's trying to intervene doesn't know which way to go. And it's only when they're well-trained that they'll be able to identify the slip ups and know exactly where, you know, who is saying the truth and who's not. Yes, I guess, you know, it's hard for a third person to make a judgment on things that have happened behind closed doors. But when you speak to somebody over a period of time, you will see patterns of behavior and that's where they need the training. They need the training to be able to not understand the story because the story can be fabricated, but look at patterns of behavior, how to ask certain questions, you know, things like that, where it would get bit more clarity in the story than well the as you are giving us so much clarity already unfortunately we are coming into another break but you're actually hitting some amazing points right now and we are going to pick up on that after the break please do stay tuned and we will be going into more depth conversation with regards to this topic and especially when it comes to further support and moving on into another relationship healthy and safely for your own salam we'll see you soon With 3 million members searching, SingleMuslim.com proudly sponsors Single Muslim Live. Assalamu alaikum. Welcome back to the final part of Single Muslim Live here on British Muslim TV, sponsored by SingleMuslim.com. Again, I want to thank Farzana so far for giving us so much information in a very short space of time. And... With this part, I want to talk more about um, that self and the identity that we need to sort of regain because there's so much loss of control, self-esteem and confidence, and even knowing 
what we even like and need and want anymore in order for us to even get into another relationship. And I think that's a really crucial point that you made for Zana, that, you know, it's so important to take that time out to reflect and get to know you again, because you've been under some sort of, you know, I would say hypnosis, um, you know, in a it's sort of like, you know, a cloud, which has not, you've had no control over and you don't even know anymore sometimes in some cases what exactly you want, what exactly you need for yourself. So how do we get to the core of actually, you know, knowing who we are so that we can actually have safe, healthy, better relationships, even after a traumatic, abusive relationship that we've come out of from our past? So when we think about who we are, we, we're never true to ourselves. We always think about who we are to others who we are as, you know, when somebody says, right, what's, you know, who are you as a person? You think, okay, I'm a mother, I'm a wife, you know, I'm a professional, I'm not a professional, I'm a whatever. There's always, we're always, um, it's always about society's view of us. So I think that's also relevant. So maybe we do a spider diagram of who, how we present ourselves, how society see us, you know? So we get an understanding of what people or what we see through society. Then do another spider diagram of who you are yourself, your core values. What are your core values? Now, I'm not talking about the values that you brought from your mom and dad. So when you were growing up, you had, you, you know, your dad had his values and your mom had her values and all of them were thrown in your sack. And so you took these values into a relationship and your husband or wife had their values and they threw those into a sack. So now you have a ton of values which you've tried to adopt for yourself to keep the peace. We're not talking about all the values. Sift through that sack and find what really stands out for you in terms of values. You know, what do you aspire to be? What do you truly believe in? OK, and so you really have to recognize your beliefs. You need to recognize the positive things that you've done in life. You need to give yourself credit for the things that you've achieved in life and even you know, leaving an abusive relationship is an achievement. You need to be highly motivated to be able to do that. And that's difficult. So celebrate your achievements. Find out where you're, you're in terms of, I don't want to say negative, but where you struggle, your difficulties, you know, where you may be lacking that you can work on yourself. Try and identify those things, you know, um, and look at your patterns of behavior. So in terms of how do you behave in a work environment if somebody who works at the same pace as you has been awarded something and you weren't? How do you feel? How does that affect you? You know, or you are awarded something and somebody wasn't. These kind of things can help you to understand who you are. Look at your patterns of behavior in different situations. So it's like you're coming out of yourself and viewing yourself for a while. That will allow you to understand who you are and learn who you are a, a bit more about yourself. Um, I think you also need to um, make sure that when you're looking at situations, you look through the lens of your perspective, not what society wants to see. And again, that's when you're talking before about culture. It's when we look through the perspective of others, we tend to fall victim of some of the cultures that have expectations on us. But if we know who we are and where we need to be and what we need to achieve, I mean, we're only in life in this world for so long. So we've got to achieve what we need to achieve, right, by the time we go. And all of our levels of achievement are different. So we need to understand, um, you know, what we do there. In terms of, you know, moving on to another relationship, we need to, like I said before, we need to trust ourselves. We need to um, realize that actually we're worthy of so much more than what we feel we're worthy of. Start listing those things, you know, have an understanding of what motivates you in life, what your passion is, what your goals and dreams are, write a eulogy, you know, anything like that that can take you out of the now and make you focus on the future. A lot of the time, particularly I work with people with learning disabilities, when trying to get them to move and make a goal, they find difficult. So I usually say in in five years time, where would you like to be? What would you like to do? And then we work backwards. So it's not about from now, where are you going to be? 
in in a dream world, where do you want to be? Let's work backwards and see what goalposts we can put in the way, you know, um, to, to kind of get you to where you want to be. I loved everything you said. It's so interesting. And by the way, I just want to add that everything that Fazana has said are also very much so psychological strategies and tips and techniques. Um, these kinds of things may seem um, to some people where it's not actually going to make a difference by future thinking or writing your goals. But actually, if you understand how the human brain works and if you wire it in a particular way and program it in a particular way, it can actually have an effect in your behavior daily. And these little strategies that you do kind of, you know, put into place will definitely help you with that transformation and switch your mind to where it needs to be, to where it does serve you. And it can be possible, like you started off at the beginning of the show saying, it is absolutely possible to move on into another relationship that's fresh, new and healthy, even after abuse, but only when you do take these steps. And I would advise that you do seek some you know, professional help, especially someone like Frazana, who is absolutely correct in all her tips and strategies. And the fact that, you know, at the end of the day, it's only for your own benefit, not just for your future partner, but for yourselves, for your family and just future relationships generally, whether they're romantic or not. Now. When it comes to uh, men and women dealing with an abusive relationship, do you think there's a difference? We are hearing more and more, unfortunately, that in the community, it is also men that are abused. I don't want to take away from that fact. Do you think it's even harder or do you think there's a different strategy and method for them to sort of um, get away from this? I think what's harder when um, when it's a man that is going through abuse is that society doesn't reach its hand out to support that man. It's often dismissed. And that's where I feel it's really difficult. So whether it's a man or a woman, you know, the abuse may be exactly the same. It could be physical. It could be emotional. It could be financial. Whichever type of abuse it is, the problem is when a man, reach, you know, asks for help, a lot of the time he struggles and he doesn't get the support he needs. And I think what I'm saying is to the community that we need to start being so mindful that it's not just women that are, you know, abused. Men are also abused. And you're spot on there, Fahima. Yeah, um, we are coming towards the end of the show. And to be honest, you've given us so much insights and wonderful uh, techniques and tips so far. But I don't want to stop right there as we do have, you know, about five minutes left. Um, if someone is struggling right now and they've just come out of an abusive relationship and they actually are also contemplating and thinking about if it's ever possible to move on to another relationship, um, what kind of advice would you tell them if they're at, at this very moment in time so that it will give them a little bit of, you know, jumpstart and motivation so that they can actually, you know, have some sort of hope in this? Because even though we've said whatever we've said, it's very difficult when you're actually in it, especially when it's really at the very um, beginning stages. So what would you like to add? I think there is hope, but don't rush. There's mm -hmm. definitely hope. Anyone can achieve anything in life. Whatever you want to do, you can achieve it. But it takes time. It takes work. So if you do all the things that we've obviously spoken about today, then definitely yes. And I, again, would say that it's always good to bounce um, if, if your partner doesn't mind for you to introduce them to others, for them to meet your partner as well to get an idea, ask the right questions, all these conversations, mingling and things like that before the, the wedding can help others to also get an idea if you don't trust some of your own judgments. So don't do this in isolation, you know, and, and not, if that person that you are marrying doesn't respect the fact that you want them to meet your family and friends, then you know that there's a problem there. Absolutely. How would anyone reach you if they need some support, Frazana? So I'm on Instagram under Frazana Inspires Wellbeing. That might be the most easiest way to get hold of me. Amazing. Um, again, I want to thank you for being on board with us on this very, very important topic. Thank you so much, Frazana, for all your information, everything that you've shared 
it is so important that we do take heed as to what's happening in our households and everybody does have a challenge. I just wanna also add from some of the text messages that we did get again, thank you so much for that. But it's not just, you know, why do good people, for example, or, you know, good kind hearted people have these kinds of challenges. If we have faith and belief in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we will understand that good people, or if you're naming somebody or labeling somebody as someone bad, we all get tested. And sometimes the, the good people are tested even more so that's what you need to remember. But it doesn't mean that without any of these challenges that you cannot handle because you most definitely can. And that's what we wanted to raise tonight on the show. It's really, really important that you do understand that you're not being punished. It is not singling you out. It's not that because, you know, why is it it's happening to me? And, you know, why is it because I'm professional in one academic area that this cannot happen to me and it shouldn't happen to me? It absolutely can, unfortunately, as we have heard. But as Farzana has highlighted, that to know yourself and your values, to take important steps even before your marriage, whether it's the first or the second one after abuse, to make sure that you understand your own identity and you are going to be building and creating yourself again with the right sort of strategies, hopefully alongside people that are supportive, which are either friends or family, as well as, you know, some professional help. I really do recommend that. Again, I want to thank Razana for being with us tonight. Please do reach out to BritishMuslim.tv forward slash support if you are triggered by tonight's episode. Again, we want to say from here on British Muslim TV, thank you so much for joining us. Inshallah, we will be back with another episode and topic next week. And we hope to see you then. And take care. Have a lovely evening. Stay safe. Assalamu alaikum. 